The Shroud of Turin. For centuries, it has captured the imagination of believers, skeptics, and scientists alike. Is it truly the burial cloth of Jesus Christ? Or an elaborate medieval forgery? It's a question that has lingered for hundreds of years, evoking deep emotion, intense debate, and rigorous scientific investigation. It's more than just a piece of cloth, it's a window into our past, into our faith, and into the very heart of one of the greatest mysteries in human history. The shroud is kept in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, Italy, and is only rarely displayed to the public. Yet, even when not on display, it remains a subject of global fascination. For many Christians, it represents a tangible connection to Jesus Christ. For skeptics, it's a puzzle, one that science might one day fully solve. The image on the shroud is faint but unmistakable. It shows the front and back of a man who appears to have suffered the wounds of crucifixion, pierced wrists and feet, marks of scourging, and a wound on the side. The man is lying with his hands folded, eyes closed. There is an undeniable stillness in the image, a peacefulness that resonates with those who view it. The story of the shroud truly enters recorded history in the 14th century. It first emerged in Liray, France, in the 1350s. At the time, the cloth was displayed in a small church, where it drew large crowds. But controversy followed quickly. A local bishop claimed it was a painting and denounced it as a fake. The church remained cautious, neither officially endorsing nor condemning the relic. In 1578, the shroud was moved to Turin, Italy, where it has remained ever since. It was kept in a silver casket, occasionally shown to the public during religious ceremonies. Over the centuries, it survived fires, wars, and even a bombing during World War II. But it wasn't until the 20th century that the shroud became a true focus of scientific inquiry. In 1898, an amateur photographer named Secondo Pia took the first photograph of the shroud. To his shock, the negative revealed an even clearer image, almost like a photographic negative of a man's body. This discovery stunned the world and fueled interest in the artifact. By the 1970s, a team of American scientists formed the Shroud of Turin Research Project, STIRP, to conduct a detailed study. Their goal was to understand how the image was formed and whether it could be a medieval forgery. They used infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray, and chemical analysis. Their conclusion? The image was not painted. There were no pigments, dyes, or brush strokes. The image was only on the very top fibers of the cloth, with no penetration into the deeper threads. They couldn't explain how the image was made. It defied easy categorization. Then came the carbon dating in 1988. This was a turning point. The Vatican permitted a small sample of the cloth to be cut from a corner, an area thought to be original. Three laboratories conducted the radiocarbon dating, Oxford University, the University of Arizona, and the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. The tests dated the cloth to 1260 to 1390 AD. The implications were dramatic. If accurate, the shroud was medieval. Not from the first century. Not the burial cloth of Jesus. For many, the results were definitive but others raised serious concerns. Critics pointed out that the sample may have come from an area that was repaired in the Middle Ages. In the 16th century, the shroud had suffered fire damage. Could it be that medieval thread was woven into the damaged area and that this is what was tested? In addition, some scholars argued that the cloth could have been contaminated over the centuries, by handling, by smoke from candles, by microbes. Such contamination could potentially skew the results. And so, the controversy continued. Fast forward to recent years. New research and new technologies are now being applied to the shroud, and they're producing startling results. A group of scientists re-examined the carbon dating issue. Instead of relying on a single sample from a possibly contaminated corner, they used microscopic fibers taken from different parts of the cloth. They employed more sensitive techniques and updated calibration methods. Their findings suggest that the earlier tests may have been flawed. 
The revised data places the origin of the cloth somewhere between 300 BC and 400 AD, a period that includes the lifetime of Jesus of Nazareth. This revelation has reignited the debate. Is it possible that the shroud really is from the first century? What would that mean for our understanding of Jesus, of history, and of faith? Let's look more closely at the image on the shroud. As mentioned, the image is not painted. It is a negative image, meaning that when photographed, it appears in a positive form, showing clear facial features, body proportions, and wound marks. The man in the shroud shows signs of having been whipped with a Roman flagrum, a type of whip with two or three thongs, often tipped with metal balls. There are over a hundred scourge marks visible. There is a large wound in the side, consistent with the gospel account of Jesus being pierced with a spear. The wrists, not the palms, appear to have been nailed, which matches what we now know about Roman crucifixion methods. Blood stains are visible at the feet, the crown of the head, and along the arms. Pollen analysis on the cloth has identified plant species native to the Middle East, including Jerusalem. Textile experts have noted that the weave pattern matches linen cloths from the first century Jewish burial traditions. But skeptics remain. They point out that there is no direct historical record of the shroud before the 14th century. Why would such an important relic disappear for over a thousand years? Why does no early Christian writing mention it? Some suggest it could be the legendary image of Edessa, a cloth said to bear the image of Christ's face, known to have been in Constantinople until the 1200s. Could the shroud and the Edessa cloth be the same? The science is complex. Some theorize that the image may have been formed by a chemical reaction between the linen fibers and amines released from a decomposing body. Others suggest radiation or light energy. One hypothesis proposes a burst of ultraviolet light, perhaps from a supernatural event. No single theory fully explains the image. That's what makes it so fascinating. It defies easy explanation. Every time we think we understand it, the shroud surprises us again. And now, with these new carbon dating results, we are forced to reconsider everything. If the shroud is genuinely from the first century, then the question becomes even more urgent. Who was this man? And how did his image get on the cloth? What's more, the blood on the shroud has been found to be real human blood, type AB. High levels of bilirubin suggest the person suffered severe trauma before death, consistent with crucifixion. Skeptics argue these results are not conclusive, but they certainly add weight to the theory that the shroud covered a real crucified man. So where do we go from here? Further testing could help answer some of the remaining questions. New technologies, like atomic level imaging and advanced DNA analysis, may uncover more clues. But access to the shroud is strictly limited, and any new tests must be approved by church authorities. There is a growing movement among researchers calling for a new international study, one that brings together historians, scientists, theologians, and forensic experts to take a fresh look at the cloth. Many believe that only through a multidisciplinary approach can we hope to unravel the mystery. Yet, we must also recognize the limits of science. Some questions may never be answered. The shroud may always be a mystery, part science, part faith, part history. And perhaps that's the way it should be. It challenges us to think deeply, to ask big questions, and to remain open to the unknown. Whether you believe the shroud is the burial cloth of Jesus or not, it remains one of the most intriguing artifacts of human history. It speaks to our deepest fears, our highest hopes, and our endless search for truth. So what do you believe? Is the Shroud of Turin a medieval forgery, or is it a miraculous witness to the life and death of Jesus Christ? Does the new carbon dating change your perspective? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into history, science and faith, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching. And remember, some mysteries aren't meant to be solved. They're meant to be experienced pondered, and explored. Maybe, in the end, the shroud is more than a relic. Maybe it's a mirror, reflecting the mystery of belief itself. 
Until next time, stay curious.